In this video, we're going to go over analyzing the Lab 8 Individual Data Analysis Sheet, a broad jump trial, uh, your individual one. So for this, this is a completely unaltered, straight out of the computer sheet. I had already added my jump distance, leg length, and height to this sheet. I also added it to this just so it would make me, it would be a little bit easier to remember. I didn't write it down, didn't have anything to write it down on. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and figure out which force plate was used because um, we got two force plates and it extracts both. So I'm just going to highlight both FZs for, for, for both force plates, force plate one and force plate two, and then we'll scroll down to see where it starts to change from zero a lot. Here it looks like we got a little bit of an electrical noise going on. Um, those, both those plates should have been zeroed. Um, but maybe it needed it again. Oh, there we go. So, looks like right around here we had a change in that. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is we can get rid of everything to the left of these. Uh, FX is right here for the second force plate, so that's why I, I'm not deleting that one. Um, keep Keeping it around, go ahead and delete that. should see FX, FY, FZ. Those are the, we really only need FY and FZ, but I'll keep FX just because, because, just because, because it's got all three there. And we'll delete the other columns. Awesome. Now I'm gonna add in a time column, time in seconds, and I'm going to get rid of these Newtons or add them up here. It's uh, We're going to be creating a graph to look at this visually. And it's a little bit easier if everything's like, like this to differentiate all the, the variables versus, uh, versus having them just named uh, N or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and scroll down. Mine, my, my your, yours probably will not be like, like this. I had to start the computer and then I walked over to step onto it. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all that uh, sort of zero stuff because it's not really needed. Uh, we'll restart. I'll restart my time here. And then I also had to turn it off. So I'm going to scroll on down, see when I stepped off. Okay, I stepped off right here. You will need to do this part though. Scroll down to where you finally are, are uh, off the force plate. That would be when you jump, essentially. And this was not the vertical jump. Vertical jump, you landed back on the force plate, or more or less did. Uh, but on this, we jumped basically forward as a broad jump and we didn't want to land back on the force plate. So we do need just one row where these, there's zeros at the end where we leave the force plate here. So my recording uh, while on here is about 20 seconds. I'm probably going to get rid of a little bit more of that just because it's going to be a lot of data. It's 20,000 data points and it can make, make the computer a little bit slow, even, even yours or even mine. Uh, looks like I'm sort of dawdling around a little bit, moving around here. Oh. Looks like we got a lockup. So it looks like I'm sort of, okay, now I'm standing on here. I can tell that because it's just staying within a very, very narrow window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete a good chunk of the data to make it a little bit easier to look at and so we don't get any lockups. I actually had two lockups while we were doing this. You may or may not see those. So my total recording is about five seconds um, for this, which makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and create a graph just to visualize 
know what's going on. This thing is going crazy. Okay. Excel doesn't even know what it does sometimes. <laughs> so I'm going to insert a scatter. All right, so I'm just standing there, standing there, standing there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scroll Okay, I guess it doesn't want to scroll up. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with that. It looks like it's uh, doing some weird stuff. So I'm just going to actually no, I can change that from here if I remember right. Ah, eh, never mind. We can see when it start, the jump starts though, right about past four and four and a quarter second. Let's scroll up and see if that's what we see. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit right around there. So the force is going down, 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 down. So I'm crouching down here and then I'm increasing my force. Increasing force, increasing force, until I'm eventually going off the force plate. Force down, up, Z, it's going down. Um, one thing, we're going to make, make this, we're going to make the, the Y, we're going to do an absolute value column, and that's going to make things uh, look, look correct. Because we were jumping, we were going the opposite direction of, of how it was sort of calibrated. Um, we jumped in the negative direction, so to speak, on here. Uh, so all we're going to do is equals to absolute value. We could instead just do a uh, minus, but that's actually going to make it a little bit worse for, for looking at some of the angles later. Um, so yeah, all that would have done is just flipped this. We can actually drag that on over and see, we got positive. What's interesting to note is when, when we begin the jump, most of our stuff is in the Z direction, FZ uh, up and down. And then when we are starting to transition into the jump after the crouch, have a lot of FZ at the start and we have some increase in FY but then we're having more of an increase past that in the FY as well before both go to zero and the force plate reads zero because we leave the force plate. So just something interesting to note. Um, oh, what we'll need to do is go to that four about, well, we can do body weight first. So let's do body weight and that's in newtons. Uh, that's going to be the average. And we can do the average for, you know, about a minute. No, no not a minute. Sorry. This thing this isn't, isn't even a minute recording. We can do a, a one second recording, essentially. There we go. All right. 804 for me. Now we need to determine where the jump starts and we I at least I already kind of figured that out from my data all right about 804 was our weight so we're it, it looked like it went up just a hair here because I might have like raised my arms up or something like that I'm not going to include that uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right when it about crosses. I'm going to add in a, a two cuts here just to indicate the start. And we'll call this, um, well, all these are going to start basically at zero. We're going to do the impulse for uh, the Y. And we'll do 
impulse for the Z. Then, what was the next one? Oh, that was the angle. And uh, actually, we could do another one, but it's not really needed. It was just going to be the uh, the resultant. We don't really need the resultant for what we're doing. So, all right. So we're going to figure out the impulse here equals two. We've got our ABS. Make sure we're in the ABS column. Plus this divided by two times difference in time and actually I forgot to do plus our previous value plus that zero and so that's just going to be a additive value and we should good looks like everything's good here it increased and again that's for the horizontal direction that's for the horizontal direction. Now we have FZ, which is slightly different in that we need to take body weight into account. We need to take into account force above body weight to have any sort of um, takeoff from that, from that force plate vertically, vertical to have vertical velocity at least. So this one's going to be just a little bit more complicated in which we need to minus by the body weight. Okay, so we will point towards our first one. Actually, I'm going to add in one more parenthesis minus body weight plus, let's see, let's go back down. There's going to be a lot of moving around, so do your best to sort of keep everything organized. Again, point up towards that. Close, we want both those things to happen before we divide by two, then multiply by that change in time, and then plus the previous number. All right, good. So as I said before, we want the subtraction of body weight to happen first. And then we want to add those two numbers together, then divide by two. And that's how this is written out right now. So make sure yours looks like this. And go ahead and hit that. And not, hmm, looks a little bit high. Oh, wait, my apologies. We forgot to add in one of our things. That number looks looked a little high, because it is. We need to go in and add dollar signs right here. Now let's redo that. OK, good. We should have negative numbers happening here, because I'm crouching down. That's why. And then it's going to become positive again. I'm exerting force against the force plate and when I leave the force plate it is positive and meaning I will have some vertical velocity going up. All right great. Now takeoff angle equals to I believe we use arc tangent or is it inverse oh arc tan a tan a tan. There we go. And that's going to be of z, because z is vertical, divided by the, the y. y, in this case, is the horizontal. And then close parenthesis, multiply by that 180 divided by pi. Make sure you have those parentheses. OK. So our angle is going down, 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 down. This is the, the angle of our resultant of where our force is going at that moment. Where is our force going? And it's going straight down. It's going straight down like so here. And 
and then I'm leaving the force plate. So I'm taking off at a pretty shallow angle here, looks like. All right, so in terms of what we need, why? Impulse, at least I'm naming it off this table. This is gonna be that last, that last one. Then the uh, y velocity, that's going to be equal to this uh, divided by, we need this in, in the um, kilograms, so divided by 9.81. And then z impulse. Just our basically our last number and our angle, angle of takeoff. So those are all of our numbers that we need for this table, which you can then subsequently copy and paste into here. Um, just make sure you do copy and paste using the values button and you can lower those numbers just make it look a little bit tidier but that's that's about it well that'll about do it uh, they do recommend you know about 45 degrees for the takeoff angle although I've seen some places not use like the last value when you're leaving the force plate they'll use like your max that's generated and my max is around 41 and that's again because well from here at least, one of these two peaks, I'm really, I'm starting to leave the force plate. Uh, and so the angle's becoming a little bit shallower from that. So you can nitpick which one's correct. They're both, they both work, but you just need to know what you're talking about. Uh, you know, the specific thing that you're talking about for it. But that will about do it for this video. Please let your instructor know uh, if you have any. Please let your instructor know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.